Okay, this meeting is called to order for the purpose of having a study session on visual and performing arts. It's March 8th, 2022, 4.04 p.m. And at this time, the Board of Trustees will hear public comments, presentations, or requests on matters listed on the closed session agenda. Speakers are requested to give their names and addresses. Time limit for the speakers are three minutes. The Board shall limit the total time for public input on each item to 20 minutes. The board reserves the right to, re to limit presentations. The meeting is being recorded. Is there anyone that would like to speak? Seeing none, we'll now begin our study session. So thank you, um, Clerk of the, uh, of the Board, Mr. Rodriguez. Appreciate um, starting our meeting out and our board members who are able to join us today. Um, this afternoon, we have um, our Assistant Superintendent, Ms. Rana Fox, who's gonna be presenting on the district's visual and performing arts programs. Um, and uh, we have, th none of our teachers are available to be with us this afternoon, but they have helped prepare this presentation. So Ms. Fox will share uh, what we have happening in the district. All right, so good afternoon. Thank you for allowing me to come today to share um, information about our visual and performing arts program here at the district. So many times when we think of visual and performing arts, we just think of SAVAPA, right? That's our one flagship program, but we have visual and performing arts programs at all, at three of our five campuses. So we have visual and performing arts at Central, Southwest, and at Desert Oasis. And I'm gonna share with you just the programs we have and some highlights from those programs. And um, at the end, I have a, a, some data. So what is visual and performing arts? Well, it's a program that encourages students to develop and value artistic creations as a means to communicate ideas, thoughts, feelings, and emotion. As a former band student, I can only remember um, all the hard times I went through and how my band family and Mr. Cannon got me through those hard times. And it really taught me how to feel and emote via the music that we played um, in all of the bands that I performed in. So through these studies, um, students can learn to plan. You have to plan what you're going to draw. You have to plan the moves you're going to make in a, in a field show. You have to plan what you're going to play. They develop and they present artistic products that reflect mo a lot of times their own creativity or the creativity of other artists. And they're encouraged to try new combinations of tools, resources, and techniques with a study of visual and performing arts. So it's a lot more than just getting out there and singing a song, playing a song, or drawing a picture. So why visual and performing arts? Well, um, there's a lot of research that says that investment in the arts shows gains in math, reading, cognitive ability, critical thinking, and verbal skills. It can also improve motivation, concentration, confidence, and teamwork. There's not a stronger team out there than a group of girls on the field performing in flags, performing in drill team, performing in cheer. And there was a 2005 report by the Rand Corporation that argues that intrinsic pleasures and stimulation of the art experience do more than sweeten an individual's life. They can connect people more deeply to the world and open them to new ways of seeing creating the foundation to forge social bonds and community cohesion. So arts bring people together. We see that with our downtown activities here in El Centro. When we had the Christmas tree lighting and all of our students were there, it brings people together. It brings a sense of community and it gives our students a purpose and a way to give back. So why study music? Um, this is one that was given to me by one of the teachers. And they said that most parents want their children to be intelligent and successful. Some experts have pushed parents to teach their, teach their children coding on the computer, but new research is pointing to music as the way to teach children and to gateway to smarter kids. Um, it says that po powerful music can help develop a child's brain. That's out of research out of MIT and in the Journal, journal of Neuroscience. And also um, in that same study, learning music during our early life makes the brain more connected which in turn makes their brains neurologically capable of many things, not just music. So it helps build those neurons and those, that connectivity in your brain. And that musical brains produce more structural and functional connections, and it improves the neural encoding of speech in at-risk children. So you'll see a lot of children that are nonverbal or children that have speech delays, they respond well to music. They respond well to the speech and music and, and, the, 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 and the incantations and the notes that are in the music. So it's really helpful. This is a quote about Einstein. Einstein said if he hadn't been a scientist, he would have been a musician. Life without playing music is inconceivable for me. I live my daydreams in music. I see my life in terms of music. I get most joy in my life out of music. 
So even Albert Einstein, one of the smartest individuals, has said if he wasn't a scientist, he would have been a musician. So here on this word, um, this word graphic, you'll see all the programs we have in our district related to visual and performing arts. Drama, dance theater, flag team, savapa theater, drill team, orchestra, jazz ensemble, electronic music, mariachi, uh, graphic design, all of those programs there listed make up our visual and performing arts in our district. And this is a quote from an educator and author, Sydney Clemens. She said, art has the role in education of he helping children become like themselves instead of more like everyone else. So again, it's that creativity, that individualness that they can find within the arts. So I wanna start with Savapa. Savapa is our most well-known program for visual and performing arts. It has about 100 students in grades 10 through 12. Although most student performances occur within the state-of-the-art theater, participating students regularly perform at other school sites and venues within the community, and these are our programs. Dance, theater, chorus, art, computer animation, and technical theater, although it's not a class, it's an integral part of our SAVAPA program because that's where most of our students do a lot of their performances. So I'm gonna share this video. This video was created by Deidre DeBose, one of our graphic design teachers in CTE and SAVAPA. Oh, now you don't want to play. It was playing. Let's see if it's going to play earlier. This happened to me in my presentation yesterday. My links didn't work. The touch screen doesn't want to work today. Oh, it's unavailable. It doesn't let me full screen.
So that's a compilation of our SAVAPA programs and the things that they've done over the course of the years. Music, dance, art, and theater, all with the help of our theater techs. So the assist, Mr. S Mr. Spataro, he teaches Savapa music, and he wanted to just highlight the fact that the Savapa music class met Lori Livingston. She was an actress in Captain America. And that they also met Gino Montesimos. He's a film and TV actor. And he wanted to just share with you a few clips of how Savapa music did not stop during the pandemic. Even during remote learning, Savapa music continued. Even though it was virtual, they still continued to sing. And then also one more. So next I want to talk a little bit about drama and theater. So drama and theater happen on both campuses um, with Savapa and without Savapa. So Robin Avila is the drama teacher at Central and they've presented the Adams Family and other uh, plays. And she wanted you to know that students explore theater history by examining its cultural and historical contributions. They are given opportunities to work on character development through improvisation and learn effective speaking using articulation, projection and breathing techniques. They also study acting, design, and dramatic literature to increase their enjoyment and understanding of what is required to repair, prepare plays for the public. And they're currently working on their first ever musical there at Central. And then of course the music, you can't have a music program in the Central Union High School District without Mr. Cannon. That's my ode to Mr. Cannon, one of the heroes in my life and a, a gentleman who saved me more than I uh, could ever thank him for, but we do have our Jimmy Cannon Theater named after him, and when you think of music and visual and performing arts in the Central Union High School District, you always connect that back to Mr. Jimmy Cannon. So marching band, this is Central. This is our great Spartan band, ode to Mr. Cannon and his legacy, right? It's one of the things that makes us famous as well. So uh, Mrs. Baker is the teacher there at Central, and she said marching season is first semester of each school year. Marching band is a part of the concert band wind ensemble curriculum. Marching band provides the students with practical experiences in cooperation, the discipline of the ensemble, belonging and pride of membership in the marching band. Then also at CUHS, there's a wind ensemble and concert band with Miss Baker. So she says wind ensemble promotes awareness and understanding of music literature from various periods, forms, styles, and idioms that are characteristic of various cultures, including our own, through the study of the repertoire of the wind ensemble. And then she goes on to say that concert band is an inter intermediate instrumental band class, and they must show their ability on their instrument, demonstrate ability and showmanship in their performance, um, and that students will perform in a variety of activities, including school assemblies, concerts, festivals, and adjudications. I was in marching band, rock combo, jazz band, wind ensemble, concert. My senior year, I was just all with Mr. Cannon. Loved it. So the beginning band and the winds and percussions um, if anyone's interested in learning how to play an instrument, they can enroll in beginning band, and they can begin to work on that total musicianship, developing performing skills and building knowledge of fundamental materials of music theory. And students who pass beginning band are then invited to band camp uh, to and membership in the marching band for the following school year. They have two concerts during second semester. Jazz ensemble, one of my favorite things, I played the baritone sax, I really enjoyed being in the jazz ensemble. So it's for advanced instrumental musicians they perform intermediate to advanced level literature from various selected areas of musical styles, including ragtime, traditional, swing, big bang, Latin, and rock. They learn theory and history of the music. They improvise, um, and jazz is the only American art form. And the director schedules performances and participation in festivals and competitions. And then also at Central, uh, we have electronic music. Oh, Dr. Tacky has a comma, not a period. So uh, Dr. Tacky does great things in the world of electronic music, right? This is also a visual and performing art. And it's a music technology class where students use their Chromebooks to create music, podcasts, ringtones, commercials, PSA, and a digital audio workstation that's cloud-based. And if I'm not mistaken, this link might have some samples. Okay. 
where his sim I'm looking at it from the side here. Oh, it's over there on that side. I have to go over here. These are the samples, I do believe. Let me double check. I'm sorry, because I'm looking at it from the side here. Aha. I'll just play you one here. If they load for me. So these are created by our students. This is Attitude of Gratitude. All digitally created with their Chromebooks. Play a portion of one more down here. I like this one. This was, I believe, their theme was gratitude for these. It was around Thanksgiving or Christmas, if I'm not mistaken. I can spend hours I listening. See trees are green, red and roses too. I see them bloom for me and you. And I think to myself, what a wonderful world. So that link is there for you to enjoy the electronic music present, um, produced up for Mr. Tacky's class and Dr. Tacky's class. He says the skills and experience learned in electronic music help students to prepare for a career in music composition, audio production and engineering, and uh, tech support. It also provides students with an outlet to creatively express themselves through music during the school years and afterwards. So they really enjoy this class. And Dr. Tacky does some good things with them. So Spartan Sound, oh here, he did actually, let me just, let me link, he wanted me to show you one of these. So there is my, here it is. He linked some for you here. You want me to share? This is a loop based song. He has some in spoken word, which are just incredible. And the students are able to just really express their thoughts and feelings. They've done some commercials um, and early in the year examples are there for you as well. So it's a Dr. Techie's class. So in chorus, um, this is Mr. Gady over there at Central. And so the goal of the choral music program is to help each student develop and strengthen musical concepts and skills, enabling him or her to appreciate music on a higher level. And he did share one sample here with us. I won't play the whole thing. It's 10 minutes, but just to show you a little bit of it. He said they learned the art of teamwork and cooperation to achieve a common goal, delivering excellent performances at school and in the community. And they performed for us at our parent university celebration. They were really good. play a little bit of it once I start singing.
So that's our chorus at Central under the direction of Mr. Matt Gady. And Mr. Um, at Southwest, we have our marching band under Mr. Yanni. It's one of our new, newer bands. And just a little bit of a clip. I think this is an older clip that I found. This is our Eagle marching band. I believe that's the Christmas parade. Looks like the police station. And Dr. Bussey there also does the orchestra at Southwest. Um, so the Southwest High School Orchestra program consists of three orchestras, the Cadet, Philharmonic, and Chamber, the last two being audition-only groups. So our orchestras regularly earn unanimous superior ratings at the SCS, BOA, Band, and Orchestra Festivals, both at the district and region level. The Chamber Orchestra has performed in such venues as Avery Fisher Hall in New York City, where they were featured on a concert premiering Mark Wilberg's Requiem, Orchestra Hall in Chicago, and Carnegie Hall. They have also performed at past ASTA National Orchestra Festivals in Santa Clara and Atlanta, and have been regular participants at the Northern Arizona University Orchestra Festival, where they recently received Best in Show honors. And in 2016, they were invited to perform at the Midwest Clinic in Chicago, an international band and orchestra concert. They've also earned superior ratings at the CMEA State Band and Orchestra Festival at UC Davis, and the SHS Chamber Orchestra maintains an active performance schedule with local and national events throughout the year. Their repertoire ranges from the music of Baroque through the modern era, regularly championing the music of the 20th century composers. And uh, there's some pictures of our orchestra students in different places at so um, from Southwest. And Dr. Bussey also does an electronic music course similar to Dr. Tacky's at Southwest. And uh, Dr. Bussey does our IB music, so this course involves the aspects of composition, performance, and critical analysis of music. While teaching concepts such as music theory and history, the course also exposes students to form, styles, and functions in music from a wide range of historical and sociocultural contexts. So Dr. Bessie left us a clip. Other music courses that we offer in our district, we have guitar at Central with Mr. Gady, mariachi at Southwest with Mr. Spataro. We have concert band at Southwest with Mr. Yanni, wind ensemble at Southwest with Mr. Yanni, and jazz ensemble at Southwest with Mr. Yanni. Art is another piece of our visual and performing arts program. We have an art class at um, Central that's taught by Ms. Taylor, and she emphasizes the elements of art and the principles of design. They explore a variety of artists, art processes, and materials, and they are involved in a creative process that requires more than talent. 
can see some of their art represented here. She also teaches our ceramics course at Central, which is another one of our visual arts. It's an introduction. This is Ceramics 1, which is an introduction to hand building with clay. She emphasizes elements of art and the principles of design. Techniques such as pinch, slab, and coil construction. They also work on engineering and construction skills through art. Miss Williams is our art teacher at Desert Oasis High School. And they explore the elements of art and the principles of design with an artistic creation. They understand the importance of studying art history and relating it to current art trends and personal art creations. This is some of the students there, their artwork at Desert Oasis High School. Jacqueline Pletis is our art teacher there at Southwest High School. So some of their artwork. She selected cultural context will be applied with attention to analysis, interpretation, and judgment of student created artwork, as well as appreciation of artworks from other cultures and time periods. That's art 1A. She also teaches advanced art and IB art. And here is her video for IB art. Mm -hmm. And Ms. Pletis also did our art class yesterday for our teachers on our professional development day. They drew a painting of equity. And also we have visual and performing arts within our CTE program. So we have photography by Mr. Baker at Central. He teaches photography one, photography two, and they learn the fundamentals of digital photographic manipulation and our computer generated graphics using Adobe Photoshop. Photography 2 learns the advanced photo skills, um, video and aerial drone photography in a digital format, digital manipulation in computer and photo generated graphics. And the history of photography, camera, video and aerial imaging is reviewed and they learn how to prepare photo and video projects for professional clients. They study FAA flight rules for uh, 26 unmanned aircrafts and they use simulators, program, fly, assemble and shoot aerial footage. They edit, com compose, and file management skills will be stressed for creation of a digital portfolio. They prepare to take the FAA Part 107 commercial license test all in photography to do drone photography, which is a visual art. Um, culinary arts is another form of art because art, food is an expression of art. It is an expression of emotions and can be very visually appealing. So Miss Amanda Hill teaches our culinary arts program at Southwest. Um, the students there earn their California Food Handler certif Certification. They learn industry essential skills such as knife skills and cooking techniques, culinary nutrition, customer service. They cater food and they execute a restaurant simulation by preparing menu items and serving customers in Cafe 56. And one big piece of, of eating is the visual piece of it. So it's very important that the aesthetics of your food look good, which is why it's included in our visual and performing arts. And graphic design, Ms. DeBose at Southwest teaches graphic design. You saw she created the video. There's digital skills. They apply critical thinking to solve design problems. They use industry standard computer design programs, Photoshop and Illustrator. It's, a, it's an A through G, um, visual and performing arts for A through G. They articulate with IVC and they create an online portfolio to be used for post-secondary advancement. 
We also have performance art, visual and performance art, right? So some of our performance arts, we have our Spartan drill team um, under the direction of Miss Sarah McFadden, and I think she left us a short video. Uh, Just watch a portion. It was founded by Miss Judy Lowe in 1964, our Spartans. Oh, 68? Okay, she said 64. <laughs> We're going to go with you. You know better. halftime show so it's been under the direction of miss mcfadden since 2001 so miss mcfadden has been directing the spartans for 21 years and she was a spartan here's one of their halftime shows in 2019 the flags in the back. There go the drill team. Tall Flags and Majorettes at Central. They're under the direction of jo uh, Johnny Holder. It's 10 through 12 students who have a passion for twirling, dancing, and marching. They're members of the Great Spartan Band. And I think there is a short video clip here that highlights them. they are. They should be coming here. They should be coming on. <laughs> they never get tired of watching the Great Spartan Band. They'll be here soon, I'm hoping. Switch to this video. You'll you'll lose me in watching the Great Spartan Band here. I know they're here in the front in this one.
Also there at Southwest, we have the drilled in tall flags are called the Majestics. And here's a little clip of them. They're there in the front. Under the direction of Stephanie Niebla. So that is the um, end of all of our visual and performing arts programs. We have quite, a, quite an array of things that students can choose to be part of in our visual and performing arts programs in our district. And I wanted to just share a little data, um, but first, are there any questions about any of our visual and performing arts programs? No? Okay, so well, I did a random sampling of um, visual and performing arts students, a random sampling of about 562 students in total. So about 373 of those students are in no other program other than visual and performing arts. Okay, that means they're not in special ed, they're not students who have IEPs, they're not students learning English, they're not students who are migrant, they're not students experiencing homeless, they're not students who are foster youth, or students who are in AVID, students in APH, or students that have a 504 plan. They're just in absolutely no other program, just banned. So of the 562, 32 of them are students with IEPs, about 6%, roughly. 74 are English learners, so that was about 13%. Um, 28 or 5% are students who are migrant. 12 or 2% are students who are experiencing homelessness. Um, I think it says 2.4% are students who are foster youth. About 3.7% are students who are in visual and performing arts class and in AVID. About 0.4% of our students in uh, visual and performing arts are also in At Promise House. And then 18 or 3.2% of them had a 504 plan. So, I mean, as you can see, again, we kind of go back to what we've been talking about with a lot of the programs that I've been sharing is a lot of that support required for the students who have an IEP, the students who are learning English, the students who might need AVID um, doesn't allow them room in their schedule to be part of visual and performing arts is what, is what this random sampling was showing me. Do I have another one? So this is just very similar. It's just a pie in case you prefer to see a pie chart over a regular graph. You can see that on my random sampling with the data that I had, the majority of our students are not in any of those specialty programs where they receive support. Again, if you're in band, they give you three, four periods of your day. Uh, you could be in zero period marching band, first period marching band, concert band, jazz band, right there you have four periods. If one of those periods has to be a tips class, if one of those periods has to be a support class for uh, students learning English, if one of those um, periods is a pass class or a, a cyber high class for credit recovery for migrant students, it really limits the ability to be, especially in marching band. Um, and I wanted to talk a little bit about the outreach. In addition, we're really talking a lot about equity. And when you look at these numbers, it doesn't look very equitable, right? It does look as if some of our students are not getting the opportunities others are to get into a visual and performing arts program. And when I, if I would have looked at our students that are um, low income, some of, our, some of our visual and performing arts programs can be cost prohibitive, although we do have an obligation as a district to support that if the parents cannot afford it. I mean, it's one of the things we must do especially students who are experiencing homelessness and foster youth. So um, what is some of the outreach that we currently do? How are we reaching out to those underserved or marginalized sections of our student body? Well, Lincoln Elementary and our local dance studios always have a spot in our Sabapa show, and that's been since I was the Director of Educational Services at El Centro Elementary, we instituted that with Lincoln. Right, Lincoln had a great dance program, we called the high school, they said, yep, yeah, you can have a spot in our show, and it's been that way ever since. I said 2012, 2011. Our, we invite our feeder schools to our Sabapa performances so they can see uh, what's going on. They're not having to pay a ticket for some of the students. There are dance camps. There used to be, um, before COVID, we held dance camps to teach dance to Imperial Valley youth, although there is a cost. It was at one time $35. 
Uh, we do hire guest artists from across, across the country to teach community workshops. Um, the dance, Savapa Dance has performed at various community events so that you, people can see what we're doing in at different schools. Uh, we have freshman band camps for our students to get that extra support when they're freshmen. We have this uh, Spartan Sound Productions website that, that features student productions so people can go on and hear what our students are doing. And then we have guest presenters um, at the ICW STEAM Festival. We were, we were there. But when we talk about equity and our goals for equity, there are some areas of need in our Vision and Performing Arts program. So some of the ideas that we came up with, we could partner with feeder schools to hold band camps for younger students. So maybe instead of charging, we could go to some of our feeder schools and hold a band and hold a dance camp there with their ACES program, with their after school program, free of charge. Because of many of our students at Lincoln, at Washington, at Seeley, at McKinley, their parents can't afford for their children to go to dance camp. And we, we have been criticized that our Savapa program, mostly our Savapa dance, includes students who've been able to afford dance since they were three years old. Right? That's some of the criticisms our Savapa dance programs have taken. So maybe one way we could combat that, or one way we could show that that's really not the case, is begin to reach out to our feeder schools. Uh, we could partner with dance studios and feeder schools. So we could partner with Jete, we could partner with Happy Feet, we could partner with Dancing Feet. We could say, hey, we want to hold, will you partner with us? And we're going to bring some of our feeder students in, will you help us hold these dance camps? We could offer fee waivers for dance camps. We could partner uh, with feeder schools and take our performances to them. Because sometimes even the cost of $10, $15, if you have a family of six or seven, is very cost prohibitive to, to even enjoy what we have to offer. And we want to really work towards ensuring that the VAPA programs reflect the demographics of our schools and that no barriers exist to participation. And that's something that's a, going to be a continuous battle for us as we work towards equity in our district. Brenda, I yes. have a question regarding yeah. Savapa Dance. For some reason, I, th I, I thought that when Savapa Dance was initially started, that it was through a grant yes. for at-risk youth or at-promise youth. Has that changed? So we're part of the California Partnership Academy, which is a grant. I don't believe that it has a specific target audience for at-risk youth, but I will double check on that for you. It doesn't come to mind, but it, I, I don't know it as well as I know some of our other programs in CTE, but I'd have to double check. Yeah, just But I do, I do know that we do, go ahead, Dr. Anderson, know. So the, that criteria still is in existence, so okay. you'll, you'll come to find out. Um, but that includes all of the different type of at, at promise categories. So English learners mm -hmm. and all of those types of things. And it's only a percentage. We wanna make sure we're reaching out to those populations. And so um, we could check specifically on the numeric value, but every year that we reapply for that grant or renew the grant, we have to submit our student data as well. So a percentage of the students that are in Savapa Dance need to kind of meet a certain criteria. Correct. They can be English learners. Low socioeconomic. And we're doing that and we're reaching those, those metrics? Yeah, uh, we have to. I mean, well, uh, I do know that we had student demographics we had to meet. I wasn't sure if they were just low income, uh, but there are student demographics, and if we don't meet them, they will not fund us. But it doesn't, it doesn't mean that it's, we, if we meet the minimum, we can always do more, right? I, I'd have to double check our numbers to see are we barely meeting the minimum in Savapa Dance, more so than Savapa, uh, Savapa Theater or Savapa Art. Um, is, uh, I'd have to double check those numbers. And, and then what is the reason again that they can't start until sophomore year? Why it's not available in ninth grade? Well, for the most, most, most freshmen have very few electives. Schedules. Schedules, because of all the requirements in your freshman year you have very few um, available spaces in your schedule, especially if you need support classes, you're limited to your, uh, and most of your CTE type programs, like academy programs, always begin in the fresh in the sophomore year, and the freshman year you get introduction to different programs, and so you can make a choice in your sophomore year. And that's how it is in the CTE programs as well. They begin in the sophomore year, usually sometimes in the freshman year there's some type of an introduction to that pathway to see if you want to go that way. But really our freshmen take Success 101 in health, they take a science, they take a math, they take PE, they take language arts, and then if they need a support class, that's it. They don't have any other electives. So if you're, if you're a, a student learning English and you need to take an um, a, a, a ELD course, you have no more electives. We only offer six courses during the year. If you're a student with an IEP and you need an, uh, a TIPS class or an extra support class, then you have six. 
So it's a, by design of our what we require of our freshmen. There's not a whole lot of wiggle room if you need any type of a support class. I don't. Um, I can do tell you, let me backtrack on, on SAVAPA as freshmen. We do offer dance PE, which is the freshman precursor to SAVAPA. So if you're interested in SAVAPA, you could get a dance PE, which counts for a fine arts, and it also counts for PE credit. So it's a double credit class, a double uh, credit, not credit. You're not getting 10 credits, but it counts twice in the graduation requirements. I don't know the answer to that. I do know a little bit more about cheerleading because my daughter was a cheerleader. Um, sometimes our uniform packages for cheerleading can be between twelve and fifteen hundred dollars. We do recycle quite a few of our costumes in Savapa Dance, but I'd have to add, I'd have to find out um, if there's how much of that cost. I know there are costs for shoes. Everyone needs to have their own shoes, um, but we do recycle quite a few of our costumes. I can get an answer for you. I can find that out. I can reach out to Miss Brooks. Um, yeah, I do know in regular dance outside of school, a costume can be one hundred and fifty, two hundred dollars. But I do believe. My niece is in Savapa dance, so they recycle a lot of their uniforms. You're, you'll see the same ones. They were wearing some that my daughter wore six years ago. So. And we pay for uniforms. We pay for costumes, too, as well, through school funds. Yeah. But again, any student that wants to be in Savapa dance, if there were to be costs, and the parents came to the school and said, my daughter wants to be in dance, but I cannot afford the uniform, by California law, that cannot be a barrier to participation in any type of an activity we would then incur the cost. The same with field trips. If there's a cost to a field trip, a uh, cost to go on a competition, um, we would then have to work with them to pay the cost. The same with, especially students who are foster youth and students who are experiencing homeless, we currently are paying for them to attend um, uh, like state uh, leadership conferences for HOSA FFA because by law we're obligated to do that. We have funding set aside just for that purpose. Yes, ma'am. We uh, one time uh, had a group here wanting us to pay for the cheerleading outfit. Mm -hmm. And we said, we'll pay for it, but you gotta learn what we choose. Yeah. And they said, no, we'll pay for our own. Yeah. And that's the thing with paying, right? So if, if your daughter came to me and we paid for her uniform, that uniform's the property of the school district and it would need to be returned, right? Yeah. Just like our football uniforms get returned to us. Um, so that, and some parents don't wanna do that. They'll go out for donations because they wanna be able to keep their uniform. But there is that flip side to it. You're right. So and, and our uniforms are not as bad as some of the other ones I've seen. So that's a good thing. So I'm, I'm very appreciative of the orchestra program. I, I, I can attest to what a great program that is. And, and Dr. Bussey does a fantastic job, yes. um, especially teaching students how to sight read music. Uh -huh. That was a skill that my son learned and he moved on. So I'm very appreciative of that. But I know what has helped that program is the feeder schools, that yes. we have the orchestra program from, you know, the junior mm -hmm. highs from McCabe feeding into the orchestra. And then there's three levels. So that's why, you know, the auditioning for the, 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 the orchestra, um, chamber orchestra. Now, kind of what are we doing in terms of our mariachi program of kind of building that up at Southwest High School? And I, and I know one of the challenges is we don't have feeder programs in our junior highs and mariachi to kind of grow our mariachi program at Southwest High School? We're dependent upon the ACES programs there, right? So some of the ACES programs tried mariachi. Uh, I know at one time Hendrick had a mariachi program, but it's very, it's very spotty. One of the things we could do is partner with our after school programs with their after school programs and see if we could, even if we had to have a teacher, we could send there. We could look at going, um, doing programs with our students after school in some type of a ninth period assignment. There are things we could do. It's gonna take a partnership between our feeder schools and us. Um, and probably the easiest place would be to see if our ARC program could partner with the ACES program and see how we could work together to build up the mariachi. Because there is interest in guitar and mariachi for our students, especially at the younger levels. Um, we would just have to work and partner with them. I'd have to work with uh, Linda and Joy and see if there's a way we could partner together. Mm -hmm. I do know the chorus program there, um, especially in El Central Elementary at Wilson, helps us with our chorus students here. Uh, but you're right, there isn't a mariachi program. Not even at Kennedy anymore, I don't think. 
uh, in the after school programs either. But yeah, mm -hmm. we'd have to we'd have to work with them. It's definitely something we can do. As well. Yeah. So I just want to add to a comment to that. Many of these programs, because we're a high school district only, we we don't have the ability to spend our resources on younger children. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and and since we're not a K-12 district, we can't align or move resources that way. So it's one of our real barriers because of the separation of the districts. So, because um, we had we had brainstormed all kinds of things to do with some resources that we have around expanded learning or some of the extra LCAP dollars to really meet some of these needs, but we can't spend them on younger grades. Um, even in the case of, for example, the after school program, we contract for service from the ARC program to provide that service for us. And and, and so, like, for example, if we wanted to expand um, dance for young people, there's clubs and businesses out there, but they're all, we'd be spending it on younger children, which we can't do. Yeah. So it really comes down to how can we partner with our elementary schools, our elementary districts to provide feeder connections to them? What can our students do in terms of leading dance camps that we can do at no cost to little ones for our young, for our people could get, our children, our students can get teaching experience as it were. Um, so we're trying to think creatively how to do that, but that, that's one of our challenges is not being able to spend our resources on younger yeah, children. And I know Dr. Bussey did that quite a bit, the camps, the, the, like the yeah. day camps for the younger, and so that kind of really exposed the, the students and then they did a, a little concert at the end, mm -hmm. and so it was a win-win. Yeah. Um, so I think kind of doing more of that, yeah. uh, I think would definitely benefit the, the Now we can prepare our students. We can spend money to prepare our students to go and teach those courses. Uh, it would just require uh, facilitating that with a teacher after school that could transport the students there, which is why I thought we could also um, work with our with our after school programs because they have an ability to get people in for the community. Like, like I, I just don't have that ability. We could say, hey, look, we'll fund somebody. You get a group of kids that are willing to learn mariachi. Hey, by the way, Lincoln, can our kids come in and your after school program do them free of charge because we, we can pay for our kids. Those are the things we can work on, yeah, to expand that. I don't know how many years <coughs> that Essential Education Foundation received teacher, wanted to teach her grass. We gave them to the Kirsty Lynn got one every year mm -hmm. just about for her yeah. drama program over there. Her music, drama and music at Wilson. If they haven't come to town. Yeah. And I don't know if Miss Jones, they can if, hear me. if we're still suffering from the, um, from being in distance learning and just getting our feet on the ground. I know that some of our programs problems are uh, what we're facing and barriers for us. But it's something that when I meet with uh, Chris, who's the director of our SEVAC program, when I meet with the fine arts department, um, we're gonna talk about how can we reach out more to our feeder schools? Um, and how can we reach out more to our students that can't afford private lessons, that can't afford jete, that can't afford dancing feet, that can't afford dance makers, happy feet, or whatever the other ones are called. Um, and I think if you look at a program that's very good at that, that's the Lincoln After School program in ACES at Lincoln Elementary. They got, when our students graduated, they picked them up. They passed their test, they became dance instructors, and that's why you see the dance group from Lincoln Elementary in our, in our Christmas program, because nine times out of 10, their instructors are former Sabbath students, getting paid by Essential Elementary because they've graduated. So that's something we can work, work to with, with the ACES programs. They're always looking for uh, instructors there too. Any other questions? Yes, Carlos. Yeah, you, um, so like one thing that stuck in mind is about um, if the parents like come to us, if they need, you know, to get like a uniform, et cetera. <coughs> and I, I was just curious, um, do we reach out to the parents instead of making it that they come to us? Like, um, and then my like follow-up part, I put it on here, like educate students of that law. Do the students know that law? Because I just remember when I taught, this is of course back, I taught at Southwest, we were just talking to students. I'll never forget, I had a student that talked to me after school, and he was frustrated because he didn't get a bus. And I was like, well, what, what are you mad about? And he was like, well, now I'm gonna have to walk, and I have to go all this way. And I was like, well, you, you know, and then we just started talking, I was like, how can you not in anything? And he's like, well, because I, I can't afford anything. I can't, I can't do that. And then I had to tell him, I was like, oh, you know, like, the school will cover it for you if you do. He's like, oh, I didn't know that. And then I said, well, why else don't you do something? He's like, well, who's gonna take me and who's gonna pick me up? Like, I, I can't. He's like, my parents work like at night, like it's just me, like there's no way like I can do anything. So I was just wondering like, now do, do the students get educated of what, of, about that law that, hey, if I wanna be, cause I remember also, you know, people that are, you know, 
family members, whatever, cousins, like back in the day from Heber, and they were, you know, a, 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 <laughs> well, back in the day, back when I was like, you know, in my 20s, right, um, <laughs> that they wanted to be a cheerleader, um, and, and it was the, the uniform and stuff, they were, they were getting the donations, but they had friends, and I was like, oh, how come some of your friends aren't doing it, because I, I know your friends, I see you guys at the parties, things like that, they're like, oh, it's because it's twelve to $1,500, I, I, they don't have that kind of money, and so I was just wondering, and I get the whole thing of the uniform. Some of them, yeah, you have to pick what it is, but chances are if the whole team's going to pick that, they're going to give them the uniform that, you know, the cheer squad picked, and they didn't know. So I was just wondering, do we, do we have like a, do the, do the students get educated and the parents let them know that, hey, that if you can't afford it, you know, we will provide this for you. Just, a, of course, that it is the districts, though, so it is that property just like checking out a uniform, you know, we will pay for that funding. And if they worry about, well, what about the funding? It's like, like you said, we have a budget for that. that. That's what we're here for. And I was just wondering, instead of them having to seek that knowledge, do we tell the students that knowledge about that? And then about, I put it there also about late night practices. Like, I think we do have a system now. I remember, right, about students do get that. So I think that got cleared up. Like, for example, like Savapa, I know they have late night practices, things like that. And do, I know kids sometimes are like, they don't want to put that burden on their parents of like, well, you know, when theater time comes around, you're there all the time before showtime, late night practicing. And some kids are like, they know that that's coming from being there and they avoid just joining because they're like, I, I don't have anybody or I can't, you know, I don't want to put that burden on my parents. Do we have things in place for that also for like late night practices can, pick up stuff like that. I think we've talked about it I remember we were discussing about uber and just we were, we were working on it but I know those are things that could help the numbers and yeah I know it was a lot of questions right. but it was like three okay, those three like yeah let's go first parents. to okay. reach out to parents and educate students of the law yeah. so let's let's look at groups of students yeah students who are experiencing homelessness absolutely yeah. yes Dr. Terry Fernandez meets with them we've given them bus passes we've given them uh, prepaid debit cards to get the, this, you know, whatever yeah. they need. We pay for their fees to register, um, state conference. We pay for their transportation. We pay for their lodging. Students who are experiencing homelessness, yes, they absolutely know that that's yeah. part of what we're required to do under the law. Mm -hmm. Students who are foster youth are in a very similar situation. Um, as far as anybody outside of those two um, communities of students, I do not believe we outright say that. Um, mm -hmm. We do with fees like AP, IV, exam fees. Gotcha. Right. Uh, we do with uniforms. Or not, I'm sorry, um, caps and gowns. Caps and gowns. Right. You can rent them. You yeah. can borrow yeah. them. We'll give them back. As a general statement, it, to my knowledge, we don't make that public mm -hmm. country. Andrew, so I'm going to turn that part over mm -hmm. to you now. No, but uh, we don't have, I, I don't believe in necessarily in the student handbook or something like that, yeah. it, would, it says that there, or is it a formal announcement that happens on a regular basis? I do know that individually, and depending on the program or the coach, they would say, if you're having trouble with this fee, well, they'll say, okay, it's $15 for whatever. Mm -hmm. if, you, if this is a burden, please come and see me. Yeah. Th that's a pretty common phrase that teachers are used to saying, because we've reiterated it to them and to help our teachers make sure they're inclusive in any of those sorts of activities. Um, especially when there's an additional cost. It, we also try and set the programs up so there aren't additional yeah. costs, right? So, um, but it's always a challenge when, again, people go, I, I, they're stretching what yeah. the district is providing. They wanna do something a little more than what the more. district can provide. They may, you know, a coach or a teacher may add something. Yeah. And that's when, you know, and then it comes up yeah. and then we, the principal or someone will say, hey, we can't do that or this is how we solve yeah. it. So um, the, the specific question on like the late nice practices, yeah. um, well, I know we have a late bus, but that's only around, I think it's a, f a five or a 515 mm -hmm. bus. It's not late, like late. an eight or a nine. Um, uh, what, we don't have the staff to do that really, mm -hmm. uh, to then do routes late at night. Um, we have specifically talked about, especially students experiencing homelessness, figuring out a way to get them set up so they have transportation if needed with something like an Uber ride or a taxi service or something yeah. like that. That's not in place. We've just we were trying to decide or discover what what is a feature that those students need, or even if we provide those students with a cell phone, mm -hmm. um, as a, as one of the services that we can help them so they can stay connected to school, connected mm -hmm. to their teacher, um, and maybe set them up with a, a an account with a taxi service or a Uber account. Oh, okay. So, but that would be also, really narrow. If there were a large number of students, and um, the teachers could also use one of our vans. 
Yeah. Right, and transport students home. It just hasn't. I know the multiple the times that I've driven, um, most parents are okay. But I do know you're right. At times, it is pretty difficult for parents if it's yeah. late and they're at work. Um, but I think more we deal with that more on an individual basis than we mm -hmm. do like a whole group. Yeah. Um, I haven't heard, and again, I've only been here, by the way, I completed my one year anniversary, so just happy to do it. But on the 23rd of <laughs> February, but in the time that I've been here, back in the day, yeah. um, <laughs> I haven't heard of anyone that has not gotten the support that they yeah. need, not to say they don't exist, but it's definitely something as a reminder to, especially to admin and people looking, please make sure your students know yeah. that are in these clubs, don't let costs prohibit you from participating. Yeah, because I remember um, when I was coaching track at Central and at Southwest, like we do, we do say that statement, or like my brother will say it. Um, but then, I, like right now, I don't know why. In reflection, yeah. I was just like, but then again, there's a bunch of kids and teenagers. It goes one year, the and then out the other. So I'm like, sometimes I'm thinking that if we actually just instead of just a handbook, because I mean, I'll be honest, I got a handbook. And you never read it. And you don't read it. Students, we don't read the handbooks. They, they should. And I get it because we should. We need to provide a handbook and because it's yeah. there. And we got to do what we got to do. But then also, like, realistically, we have to, you know, accommodate to the way students are. And we know, like, Ms. Jo like Ms. Jones said, most don't read the handbook. So in my yeah. mind, it's like, instead of we could be proactive and just say, even in, in orientations, even, even if it's just a freshman, in the freshman orientation of, hey, guys, you're entering high school. This is what we can provide for you. This is what you can get. This is what we're planning towards, and the ones that I know you guys, because by then, students have already developed that, that concept of, you know, they see their parents struggle, or, or they don't want to put that extra, or a single mom working hard, they don't want to put that extra burden on them, and this is kind of them letting them know, like, welcome to our district, welcome freshmen, this is what we can provide you. If you're, if you're worried about late nights, you know, obviously we're working on it, but this is where we could even let them know we're working on that. This is what, there's a late night bus here, we're working on something to do that. So just that way they know like, okay, because yeah, because the, the way I see like the wording, the wording of it, of I, I, it kind of threw me off of like, um, of like, instead of like, we have to do this, it's more like we want to do this. Well, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, no, I it, yeah. So that they get the, make sure that nothing gets in the way of exactly. Like they get the vibe of like, time. it's not that we have to, it's like, I mean, we do, but like, they get the vibe of like, no, we want to do it. Like here, here, we're not hiding anything from you. This is this is what we're here for. So okay. I think that in the future would be very That's nice. Definitely something we can talk about. Yeah. And to answer your question about Savap, Eric, I was uh, I got a message from uh, one of the parents, and she said no, they do not pay for their costumes in Savap. Awesome. awesome. I I Thank you very much. Though, yeah. <laughs> I didn't even know all of these to be honest. I was a band person as well. So. I wish I had a dollar. Every dollar I've given a student to buy lunch, yeah. buy PE uniform, buy shoes, shoelaces, mm -hmm. uh, help them go to a trip, I'd be rich. How many <laughs> right, 100%. All those yeah. You didn't even want. yeah. Oh. <laughs> all right. Any other questions? Those are some. That's some really good feedback and some things for us to bring back and um, and, and work towards. But again. Uh, we do recognize, as you've seen with many of our programs, yeah. right, that we have some, some equity issues, and a lot of it is systematic. A lot of it has to do with scheduling yeah. and things like that. But, I mean, now that we know, um, we can work towards how can we solve that, what can yeah. we do. One step at a time. One yes. Time. Any, are there any other questions? Ooh, I don't know if Thank you, Rona. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Comprehensive. Thank yeah. you. And, and, I like this was fun. Videos. This one was, yeah, and, and you know what? I, I will tell you that this was all the teacher's work. I just presented it. I did a few of the slides, and then they go, we don't like this one. Can we change it? Sure. <laughs> it's your showcase. Yeah. And there were some programs that I actually did not know about, I guess, yeah. that have been added on in the time frame that I didn't have In the olden yet. days, like, maybe like, they oh, didn't dang. have them. I know. So that that we could probably put on our website. In the olden right days, there. maybe they didn't have them. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I, I was like, when I went to school, I knew about a couple, but there were some there that I was like, oh, dang, I didn't even know. Like, I would have wanted to do the, yeah. the music one. It's pretty cool. I know photography was around, but yeah. the technology was way different in the early 2000s. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, thank you, Ms. Fox, for you your presentation. Welcome. And please send our regards to the teachers that provided all the information. Mm -hmm. Okay. This study session is now ended.